Hey folks, Quilly Dean here and welcome to Let's Try Democracy 3. This is a press beta preview of a game that I have enjoyed very much in the past. I was a huge fan of Democracy 2 and actually I'm a big fan of everything that Clis Harris does. He's the uh, programmer who's also the person who's created Gratuitous Space Battle, Kudos, and many other games that I really, really, really enjoy over at Positech Games. So, uh, Democracy 3 is mostly a reskin of 2, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, 2 is an excellent game, and a refreshed interface is not a bad thing. But in addition to that, there are now more decisions, more uh, types of politics that you can get involved with, uh, more detailed focus groups with people, and also entirely new situations. Now, if you've watched my Democracy 2 video, the gameplay will not be tremendously different, but it's still a heck of a lot of fun. Let's go through some of the options really quickly, starting from right to left. Quit and help is pretty self-explanatory. Mods is very exciting. Uh, a lot of people have always done a pretty good job of modding most of Positex games, and it's nice to see these uh, more and more explicitly supported, because if we can support uh, more types of nations, more uh, national decisions, that sort of thing, I will certainly be very happy. We've got a political compass over here that is kind of interesting, the last 50 election victories, and shows where on the left-right liberal conservative spectrum your country was at each victory. So I've only, in uh, this particular install, Democracy 3, only did a couple of test games as the UK, so and I landed, well, fairly socialist and fairly liberal, which is not terribly surprising the way that I play these games. The website, the options, a nice little set of options, not too much. You can turn some of the other options off. I don't like the fact that the... Um, the on is just the white square and off is black, like I'd rather a little check mark or something, or you know, green for go, uh, because I find it a little confusing, but uh, all in all, not too shabby. Let's go ahead and start a new game. So, a uh, new set of nations this time around, and this time they do have real names. In Democracy 2, they were mostly made up names, as I recall, but we've got the UK, France, Germany, United States, Canada, and Australia. In each one of them, you get some nice and interesting statistics, including a few interesting and unique ones, like Vegemite, consumption, moose population, maple syrup consumption, uh, and all of them actually have a Big Mac index, which is a, oh, no, apparently Germany does not. Um, but the Big Mac index is a real thing. Cannabis use, really, France, is a real thing. It's uh, basically how, mu what's the effective cost in real dollars that it takes to purchase a Big Mac in your country? That is both, like, based on what the, um, the actual price of the Big Mac is in your currency, plus the effective strength of your currency. So you, it's a, it's one of those ways to actually compare the uh, affluence of different nations. Now, I believe that there's even some nations that are intentionally screwing with uh, the price of the Big Mac just to um, just to get a better listing on the Big Mac index, which is kind of crazy. Anyway, I figure I should probably do my country proud and actually play as Canada. Canada became a self-governing dominion in 1867 while retaining ties to the British crown. The government is a parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy with Queen Elizabeth II as Ihad, well there's a bit of a typo, of state. This is a press preview beta build here. There's uh, still a lot to go to this game. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see quite a few things change by the time you guys get this in your hands. Uh, hopefully more nations to play actually, because I, I think that would be quite fun and exciting to add more variety there, but of course the modded community will also be there for us. Moving on, the country is officially bilingual and multicultural. The economy is one of the largest in the world, relying primarily on its rich natural resources. Canada is a member of the G8, NATO, the Commonwealth of Nations, and the UN. We have a whopping 33 million people occupying our almost 10 million square kilometers. Uh, there's a lot of space between people. Our life expectancy is pretty good. Uh, you know, 81 and a half compared to the states, which is 78 and a half, so we got an extra three years on you guys. Aha! Uh, but the GDP per capita is definitely a little bit lower. Um, ironically, so check it out. So the States has more gross domestic, domestic product per capita. So per, if you took all the money generated by the US and divided it evenly, they would make more than Canada does. However, Canada has far less poverty which says something about various types of inequality. Uh, but let's go ahead, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at what the, this moose population variable gives for us and we'll see what we can do. We've got a mix of British, French, and other, and, uh, and a Big Mac index of 463, which is higher than the Americas. So not only do most Americans make more money than Canadians, but their food is slightly cheaper. And that, that is definitely something I noticed when I was there. I was surprised at how inexpensive the food was um, every time I go to visit. So we can set up our initial uh, party. Now these are randomly generated. If I X out and go back in, you're going to see, oh, went to the UK again. But you're going to see these change. Democrats, Liberal Democrats, which is not great variety. Green Party versus the Popular Front. And 
the Liberal Front versus the Social Democrats. There we go. You know what? We'll take uh, we'll take these names. Why not? We're gonna go for um, we're gonna go for two terms in office in this video, and each term is going to be five years. Um, there is no compulsory voting, so some people will not vote. We are we do have a monarchy. That's true. We get some earthquakes apparently. I don't know and hurricanes. What? We'll leave the default on, that's fine. Difficulty is currently set to 100%, which I don't think will be that hard. Innate socialism is currently at 100%, but I think that's just sort of normal amount. So you can make people more socialist or less socialist, more liberal or less liberal, and how apathetic they are, which can be a two-edged sword, because if you upset people, um, their apathy, with low apathy, then they're more likely to actually do something about it and vote for the other people. Um, the socialism and liberalism, if you have these set higher, I think it's going to be, especially the socialism, I think will be quite a bit higher because, or quite a bit easier, because people won't mind so much if you're taxing the hell out of them. Uh, but we'll leave these as it. So the liberal front is us versus the social democrats. All right, let's go. So, um, misinforming the electorate, making impossible promises, reticulating votes, fudging unemployment figures. Sounds like standard operating procedure to me. So congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to your new job as prime minister. The lives of all 33,476,000 citizens are now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible, while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face a re-election in five years, so will you, need, you will need to monitor the opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. So currently our GDP is kind of low, our health is exceptionally poor, although we have a fantastic education system, apparently. Some amount of unemployment to worry about, uh, some amount of crime, although it could be worse, and actually a decent amount of poverty. Let's begin our term of office. So, when you first get to this screen, you might be incredibly overwhelmed by all the stuff being thrown at you. Now, when you actually play the game the first time, there is a tutorial. I've already skipped past all that, and it's basically the same mechanic as Democracy 3. It's, it's, this game is played completely abstractly, and it works perfectly in this sort of abstract. It, it's beautiful and wonderful, and I love it. In the middle are all the different types of voter groups, and how likely, how much they like you, and how likely they are to vote for you. In the background, and hopefully you can see, there's a kind of a gray box. The more gray there is, the more people are in that group. For example, in, apparently in Canada, we don't have that many hardcore capitalists. We have slightly more patriots, slightly more religious people than that, slightly more environmentalists than even that, more middle income, and then you start to drop down for state employees, not very many ethnic minorities, and so on and so forth. So if you're looking to face re-election, what you want to do is try to make those groups as happy as possible. We have a huge amount of socialists, apparently, go figure. And then you'll notice every time I mouse over these, it shows me some stats. And what this are, this is, this is showing all the green arrows coming in, those are factors that will make the socialist like me more, and the red arrows are things that make the socialist like me less. And the speed that it goes is showing the amount of influence. So uh, there's a little bit of poverty, which is the socialists don't like. Uh, but uh, you know, from other things, they're being powered up pretty quickly. In fact, we seem to have very high equality right now, and that's really making quite a huge difference with socialists. We can also click on this and get a description of who they are. They want redistribution of wealth. Uh, how happy they are, how many of the population are those people, how currently supportive they are, and you know, they are highly trusting, they're, they're not cynical, I haven't really like ruined our situation quite yet. So uh, we have some uh, ministers, we have Paul Gretzky, which is perfect, uh, Olivia Campbell and David Johnson are members of my, uh, my cabinet that are sympathetic to the socialist cause, so that is increasing our relationship that much further. And then a variety of other things like um, socialists like the fact that the corporations are being taxed, for example. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some of those things and how they how they work out for us later. But the catch is that, and if we hit focus group here, we'll see people who are socialists. So for example, this is a we're looking at Abigail. That's not Abigail. But right now we're looking at Abigail Esposito as a token member of the socialist demographic, and she actually belongs to more than one group. She's a socialist, but she's also retired. A bit of a patriot, it's not as big of an influence on her voting opinion as, say, the socialist. But she's also a trade unionist, and they apparently are not terribly happy. Neither are the middle income people, and so on and so forth. And so you can keep clicking through here. So this is an example of a socialist. Now, socialists generally like me, but this person here does not. And why? Well, they're a big member of the religious group. So the religious group is clearly very unhappy. Um, there we go, yeah, very, very little line. So let's take a look at why that is. Well, we have legal abortions, so that's making them upset. 
Uh, they also don't like the legalized prostitution, which I had not realized we were running here. Um, so, you know, these are things that are upsetting them. Now, there's two things, two approaches you can use to deal with this issue. One is to take away the things that make them unhappy and or add things that make them happy. The other thing you can do is find ways to reduce the number of people who fit into these demographics. Uh, for example, you can reduce the number of people who are religious if you, over here, this is the creationism versus evolution argument, if we stop teaching both systems and instead just teach evolution. That will actually, that will piss off the religious people, but will dramatically reduce the number of people who are in the religious faction, for example. Um, and so now we're going to talk about what all these circles are. So, the blue circles are simply stats that you can look at. Um, for example, health. Blue circle for health. This is how generally healthy are my pop is my population. You can see the effect of changes over time. You can see what is causing the health. Anything that is red is pulling health down. Anything that is green is bringing health up. So our National Health Services is bringing our health up. But the fact that we have a fair amount of pollution is bringing health downwards. Then we have effects. The fact that health is kind of low right now, like our current health status is hurting the membership of our retired population. I guess people are dying sooner, so there's not as many retired people. It's also bringing down productivity. People get sick, they don't go to work, it brings down productivity. And productivity is one of those things you want to bring up as much as possible, because productivity really affects GDP. Well, it's one of the many things that affects GDP, and GDP is your tax dollars. We want very high, good GDP. So that's the blue. Blue is just stats. So for example, we can see here what our average education levels are, uh, private health care, uh, private school status and the environment. Now this whole sl slice here is public services and if we move over here this is economy you can see in the background over here we have taxes, uh, welfare, yeah, um, foreign policy, transportation, law and order. So the blue is just stats. So what is the white? Well the whites represent the actual policies we have in place. For example if I click on this percentage sign over here we can see this is our income tax policy. We've got it set at a 41% income tax relative to whatever. I mean, if you put it to 90%, it's, I don't know if that's actually taking 90% of their income, but you can see it had some pretty dramatic effects. Like if we go to 90%, the middle income people will be utterly furious because we are just robbing them blind. And the wealthy people, also pretty furious, although slightly less so, I guess because they have more ways to work around income tax. On the other hand, socialists will be incredibly happy and so will equality because of course this is a, um, it's kind of a progressive tax. The more money people have, the harder they get taxed. So people who are poor, it's not gonna bother them because they don't have any money to get income tax either. And it does bring up equality because there's not gonna be any rich people left over after you do this sort of thing. So we can revert these changes here. We can also, so we can decrease our income tax or I can cancel the policy outright. Now, you can see here this fist with the plus 26. This is how much political capital that I have. This is my ability to make changes. If I want to raise income taxes, no matter how much or how little I raise it, if I raise it at all, it's going to take 25 political capital to get that done. It's really hard to justify a tax increase. But lowering is quite a bit easier. If I can lower my taxes to any point I want, it will only cost me 6. And to cancel the policy outright will cost me 11. So in, fact, in practice, it would be better to go down to 1% than to cancel it outright. But there might be slightly different effects from going one to the other. The other thing you'll note is there are numbers over here in the side. This represents how much inertia each one of these meters has. So the bigger the number, the longer it takes to register. So everything with a zero will register instantly. If I, um, if I max out the middle income or the uh, the income tax, the middle income people will become pissed off instantaneously, and and most of the the people will respond instantaneously. Instantaneously, but equality takes a while for it to register because it's actually going to take four quarters to register because it does take a little while for all this to trickle down. So I'm going to revert these changes and not make that change. Finally, so that's the blue and the white. Finally, what is the red? The red represents a specific special event going on that's been triggered by something. So for example, here we have an asthma epidemic. And the blue is where we currently are. The red line represents um, what at what point this triggers, what point this starts. So normally, I'm not going to see the asthma epidemic. Assuming everything is okay, I'm not actually going to be able to see this button on my screen. It's just not an issue. But internally, whenever this blue line internally goes above this red line, then the asthma epidemic will kick in. And it has a slight problem, uh, slight malice on productivity, and a huge, it hugely upsets parents. They really don't like an asthma epidemic with their kids. Um, 
And then the problem is to make the asthma epidemic go away, it's not enough that I drop it below the red line. I actually have to drop it all below the all the way below the green line for this to kick in. Now the things that are currently affecting the asthma epidemic, um, car usage actually boosts the asthma epidemic. It makes it increases the amount of asthma there is and the environment decreases it. But right now the problem is the, uh, the environment's not good enough to decrease it enough to make an offset. These two, you can even see visually, they're, they're pretty much the same. So everything's staying kind of um, even. So there's two approaches. I could see if there's a way for me to reduce car usage. And this is Canada, good luck. And the other way is the environment. And I say Canada, good luck, because the problem with Canada is we have a crap public transit system. We might be able to do something about that, and I'll investigate that in this particular game. But in reality, like we really do, and it's hard to get people off their cars. But maybe the environment we can do something for. Let's click through and see what's affecting the environment. Again, we're getting a double whammy with this car usage, because the car usage is also depressing the environment. Uh, air travel amount is bringing it down just a tad, but not really enough to matter. And frankly, uh, air travel is not something that I've ever found that I control directly because as our GDP improves, people tend to use more airplanes. So it just tends to happen. There might be other things we can affect. In fact, the, uh, our GDP is bringing down the environment as well. I think uh, the stronger our economy gets, like the more work is actually produced, the worse the environment will actually get. Now we do have clean energy subsidies and micro generation grants. That's for people to like make their own power with windmills and you know, um, or better yet, solar panels on the roofs of their house, for example. So this is helping the environment a little bit, but maybe we can help out with that. Um, and right now the environment being so low is actually like boosting pollution. What? And that's, that's really it. Like we have pollution going on right now, which is actually another one of those red problems. And it's because the environment is crap and making things worse. So it's pissing off environmentalists, bringing down health, and it's actually increasing the number of environmentalists there are. So this is the opposite of that religious thing with the, um, the Darwinism, the evolution versus creationism. That one pissed off religious people, but decreased membership. Well, this pisses them off and increases the number of people who are environmentalists, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. Um, and so this is just making a situation worse. So I would really like to get rid of pollution as much as possible. I would like to boost our environment uh, if we can. So we're going to investigate that. We might try to bring down car usage a little bit by improving public transit, for example, but we might be able to do some, uh, introduce some new policies. Let's take a look at the car usage though. Um, this is, oh, that's traffic. This, here we go. Traffic, car usage, what is bringing it up? Well, we're building a lot of new roads, so that's improving the amount of people who are driving. We do have a petrol tax, uh, which we could uh, increase, and that would discourage the drivers more and more and also make us some money, so that's interesting. Um, we do have toll roads, but they're very, very, very rare. We could uh, increase that, which would also make us a little bit of money and again, reduce the number of drivers. Um, but some of these are, po are popular and some of them are not popular. Road toll roads, people seem to be kind of middling about it. It doesn't really bother them too much. Some things are really unpopular. Let's take a look at our budget. So currently, we have a yearly, so that's my, my political capital. We have a quarterly income of $78 billion. We have a quarterly expense of 79 billion, which means we have a deficit of $1 billion. And we are currently $1.2 trillion in debt, which is certainly not great. That is actually gonna be a big problem because um, since we're in debt already, we're also paying uh, interest. So we've got an interest rate of 2.36%. And if we look at our expenditures over here, um, we should also be able to see interest somewhere on here. Actually, it might just be increasing our debt. Oh, debt interest, there you go. So our fourth largest expense is actually our debt being paid off, which is pretty brutal. Number one expense is our state health service, which, you know, I mean, national health care is not cheap. Although, Canadians, despite having a three year longer life expectancy than Americans, pay on average about half as much for their health care as Americans do. In fact, the the national health care bill for Canada per person is about the same as the national, like the the public, the government healthcare bill for Americans. And on top of that, Americans tend to need a lot of private insurance, so go figure. But it does cost a lot, so it's something we've got to keep in mind, certainly. State pensions, so these are uh, retirees. Um, and possibly disabled people. I'm not sure if that also factors into that particular number, if it stands out on its own. And then our schooling system as well. But that debt thing is really, really bad. And at the very least, I would like to uh, eliminate our deficit altogether if we can. We've got income here. Most of our income comes from income tax. We have get a fair amount from sales tax and corporation tax as well. Now, taxing the corporations quite heavily, while it makes the, um, is it this? 
While it makes the socialists quite happy, it does run the risk of impeding, yeah, see, it's gonna create this uncompetitive economy over here, uh, right here, uncompetitive uncom economy, which is bad in the worst, bad in general. It really depresses your GDP and also pisses off capitalists, which I don't mind upsetting people quite so much, but bringing down the GDP is harsh. Uh, we could help eliminate it by bringing up or bringing down our corporate tax rate because right now it's increasing the uncompetitive economy but we could also improve productivity which is not terribly good either and i would really like to do that maternity leave brings it down narcotics abuse brings it down and health brings it down <sighs> unemployment alcohol consumption yeah and health but i mean we're already paying a lot that's a pollution which brings us back to the environment you know tackling the environment may really be a decent way to uh to improve some of this stuff. So, all right, so what can we do about this? We can start fiddling with meters, that is one thing. The other thing we can do is we can implement entirely new policies, for example, that aren't there. Um, assuming that we've got the resources and such. So, um, thinking about the environment, what are things we can do? We can implement pollution controls, um, which would help the environment a fair deal. It does, uh, it does reduce GDP though, because it makes it harder for big businesses to run, and some people will not be particularly happy about that. We can introduce recycling programs, and that's maybe not a bad thing. Uh, what else would help the environment? Um, hybrid car initiatives under the tax rate. And if we're worried about money and running out of money, we could implement more, uh, more taxes, like a junk food tax. It's not popular, but it might work. Health tax credit, a system of tax reductions and credits designed to encourage people to spend their money on private health care in order to reduce their tax liability. This boosts health care without involving the state running hospitals or employing doctors, but its effect is limited to those people in society earning enough to be paying tax in the first place. It's very popular. It's going to cost us a fair amount, though, which is interesting. Um, public services. Law and order. So we're going to look into more of these soon. Some car emission limits actually is really cheap to put in. We'll decrease the number of people who drive, try to encourage them to use public services, and improve the environment in all kinds of different ways. We're going to implement this. Uh, and fuel efficiency standards might be a good idea too, but the car emission limits are slightly more popular with the voters. I mean, they're kind of ambivalent about it. Some people will be upset, but not that many. So we're going to piss off motorists, but also uh, and decrease the income of people in the motorist bracket, which is kind of interesting, but it does lower car usage and CO2 emissions, it improves the environment, and makes environmentalists happy. The only thing we have to decide now, since we are implementing the policy this turn, we can set the meter to anywhere we want without paying any additional capital. So we have to decide exactly where we want. Do we want this at the absolute maximum? Frankly, I think I'm going to do that. We're going to have cars that burn gas as cleanly as possible. Now, it is going to take quite a long time for the environmental effect to really kick in properly. And same with the CO2 emissions and also the car usage to drop. But um, it's going to piss off the motorists right away. It's going to make the environmentalists happy right away and drop the motorist income instantly. You know what? I'm, I'm doing it. We're going to apply these changes. Um, motorists, a lot of our population are motorists, which is really unfortunate. Um, because pissing them off is not going to be good. By the way, this is our overall popularity. If there was a vote going on now, we would lose, and it wouldn't even be close at all. Um, and that would not be good. Um, I think, assuming I've got the political capital, I might put in a junk food tax. It's not going to raise much in the way of money. It's really not. But I think it's probably a decent enough idea, even though it's really unpopular. Youth also hurts the poor and increases poverty, that's true. But it does increase health. So we're gonna do we're gonna do something like that. Boom. Alright, I've got a little bit of political capital left. Um and I would like to raise more money, but I don't think we're gonna be raising the income tax at this point. Uh is there anything else I wanna tweak? What are the problems we've got? We've got a bit of an organized crime problem, which gambling is feeding into. We do have intelligence services, armed police. Which, you know, to me always sounded funny at first until I played a game as the UK, and of course the UK don't have armed police, not their regular police. We also have some problems with alcohol abuse. Wow, do we ever? Holy cow. Some of it from poverty and unemployment, but also the alcohol consumption is quite high. Uh, we do have alcohol tax. Frankly, in Canada, it's very high. We should probably max that out again. The poor 
It's going to hurt the poor and increase poverty. But it's going to decrease alcohol consumption. You know what? Canadian, we do have very high uh, alcohol taxes, so we're going to see what that happens. So the poor, we're going to get more poor. And luckily they don't hate us, and we should be able to improve the situation a little bit as we go. The biggest thing, if we can make the environmentalists and the middle income people happy, we're going to go a long, long way. Although, that income tax, oof. All right, we're out of political capital, so let's go ahead and jump to the next turn at this point. Preparing sound bikes, sound bites, making impossible demands or impossible promises. So quarterly status, poverty has gone up a little bit. Everything else is pretty much where it was. There's a question here for a debt protection law. Debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the methods they're using, sometimes quite aggressive, to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A Should that have been to whom? Two people whom, oh. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. So we can choose to limit their activity. These agencies are preying on the weakest and poorest in our society, often tricking them into borrowing money at exorbitant rates that can never be repaid. This is little more than extortion, and the government should act at once to limit severely the activities of such unscrupulous companies. Alternatively, we can allow them to operate. Nobody forces people to borrow money they can't repay, and to restrict the rights of debt agencies to recover legitimate debts would be counterproductive. People need to learn to live within their means and not expect the state to bail them out of trouble if they cannot learn to do so. Um, I'm going to pick the first one because I believe that most of these, like, check cashing places and things like that, these payday loan places, they are like huge scumbags that do charge ridiculous rates and most people are simply not able to calculate. I mean, most of the people who end up going to one of these places are people who almost by definition are, are kind of bad with money. They may have been unlucky with money or they make make poor choices with money, but they're already in a pretty terrible place. Uh, and these places don't help you get out of there. There are very few exceptions where it's like incredibly good that they exist. Frankly, I think they're mostly mostly detrimental and dig people deeper and deeper into a hole, so I'm gonna pick that. Other than that, global economy is doing well, so that's improving our GDP. Budget report, we do have a surplus, excellent. It's quite small, uh, too small to act as a trigger to raise spending or cut taxes. So another little typo there, but again, this is a beta. This game is still a fair ways from release. Uh, poll report, yeah, they don't look good. We've only got 41%, although I think that might be a slight bump from where we were. And our cabinet. So let's we're going to talk about things like our cabinet in this particular episode. Let's go look at all these stats up top. First, we've got our intelligent briefing. This is the threat assessment. All the groups that exist that might be threatening. Now, some of these are fine and plenty safe uh, groups, like the Human Rights Society, um, at 1.2 million people as members. I mean, they're the Human Rights Society. They're fine. They're not a real threat. However, sometimes they can radicalize. And I believe down here you've got radical groups, right? So if you've got the Church of Christ over here, which is fine, but some members might radicalize into the Crusaders of the Lord, for example. And these people become very, very dangerous. Um, and so these are the people you want to keep an eyeball on, for example. So that's the intelligence briefing. What else we've got? Lots and lots of polls and graphs and, ah, oh, so good. Um, you know, the people, their, their opinion of us in different categories. Um, very handy. We can toggle lines on and off to sort of filter things. And that is lovely. Car emissions limits. No food tax. What is that down there? Debt protection law. Oh, these are events. All right. I made these changes, and then I can see how that's influenced everyone, uh, everyone's opinion of us. So, um, converging over here, some drops, a little bit of a rise over here. Generally speaking, we're not impressing people too, too much. Although, yeah, this is the um, the debt protection law, which we'll have to check out its inf influence on people. Um, our focus group that we uh, that we can bring up whenever we want. We can regenerate as many new groups as we want here. Like that, and they have different looks, and they belong to different groups and overall opinion. So this person is religious, for example, and that seems to be the most significant thing weighing them down. She's also wealthy uh, and very influenced by the wealth. And everyone belongs to the everyone group, and apparently the everyone group does not like me very much. All of the policies in play, which ones are very popular. People like the fact that we have prisons, for example. They do not like the fact that there's a junk food tax and little things like that. So, we, you know, we've got to kind of mix and match these, uh, these, these types of things. And then our changes. This is since the uh, first elected. Oh, okay. So overall, uh, alcohol consumption keeps going up. Oh, that depresses me. It makes me want to have a drink. Um, what did I want to check? Oh, I want to check our... Creation versus evolution. 
this, this whole thing is not popular, but what we're going to do is we're going to crank that up. It's one of the things I usually do in these games. Drop that religious membership as much as possible. It's going to make the liberals happy, and it's going to increase liberalism in general, which is going to be very good for the sort of policies I tend to do. I tend to piss off religious people. I tend to make liberals relatively happy. Now, keep in mind, this is the actual proper definition of liberals, which is these are people who like, um, generally speaking, they like, uh, like the, the freedom. Right? They don't like it when we enact things that limit rights and freedoms. Um, you can think like libertarianism kind of thing sort of falls under this category. Um, not to be confused with socialists. No, socialists are people who like to see re redistribution of wealth. We can actually get these descriptions pretty effectively if we pop onto one of these and, and find out. Personal liberty and freedom. Freedom from unwarranted monitoring or intrusion by the state. Strong supporters of human rights. The right to a fair trial. Right to personal privacy, etc. Char often characterizes the opposite of the religious right. So, uh, we have a lot of liberals in our country, right? Quite a huge percentage, yeah, 57.8% of our people are liberals. So if we can make them happy, that's really gonna go a long way towards improving our, our status. Their overall income is flatline, membership is pretty flat. So they don't like the fact that we have CCTVs, the intelligence service, wiretapping. They do like the Racial Discrimination Act. This is, this is I assume it's an anti-discrimination, right? <laughs> It's kind, of, it's kind of weird in the title, but yeah, uh, prevents citizens from being discriminated against. Uh, it decreases racial tension, increases the liberal happiness, increases ethnic minorities, which does have certain other side effects. Uh, it pisses off conservatives a tiny little bit and increases overall liberalism. Let's take a look at ethnic minorities here. We've got almost 14% of our population is an ethnic minority, so greater than one sixth. No, that's wrong. Greater than an eighth. Um, they're unhappy from the border controls, um, but, and there is some racial tension, apparently. Racial tension. Hmm. It's being brought down by citizenship tests, which I guess are, are relatively medium. Oh, no, the tensions, that's why. Um, because it's, the tension is going down because we're not letting in as many people from other uh, minorities. Or the tests are ensuring that the people who come in are going to kind of toe the cultural line that's already here. Um, so we're going to encourage people who, for example, know either French or English. Or both, ideally, for example. Right? Um, because those are the two official languages, as opposed to not having the tests where we could, would let people who don't speak one of our official languages in, and that would increase racial tension because there would be this sort of like an unhomogenous culture. Um, and while Canada is relatively multicultural, there's still, you know, going to be certain requirements to make sure that everyone can sort of blend in. So that's the grass. We've got our income over here, which we've looked at before. Next up, these are the new policies we can implement. Finally, achievements. So I got a few in my test game where I ran for a little while, which is very satisfying. So some of these may have actually triggered in this particular game as Canada as well. Uh, what are some of the other things we could do? Um, cabinet government managed to steer the ship of state for six years without having to resort to firing a minister or enduring the embarrassment of resignation. That's interesting. Speaking of our ministers, so here they are. Um, so the amount of political capital that you get every quarter is based on the effectiveness of your ministers. So this guy here, William Kim, uh, he's giving me 5.4 political capital every quarter, which is quite good. He wants the law and order position, which he's got. He would also be happy in welfare and economy. He has huge loyalty. He's not very experienced. Um, he's not terribly effective, but, you know, I think the effectiveness is a combination of loyalty and experience. And sympathies. Parents and ethnic minorities like this guy. So if I need to boost my reputation with the group, I can do it by cleverly hiring the right kind of people to sort of appease people. Now, on the flip side of the spectrum, we've got um, Maya Lemieux over here, who is not terribly effective. She's not very loyal. She's not very experienced at all. Environmentalists and, and patriots like her, but we could replace her. It would cost four political capital to do. Uh, and apparently I don't have any right now, so I guess that's going to be the end of the turn. But at some point, we might do that. So it takes a certain amount of political capital to fire any given person. This one costs a lot more, and I'm not sure why. Uh, some of them really cost a lot more. Is it because of the loyalty or effectiveness? I'm not not sure. It might be how long they've been around. I'm, I'm not positive here. Um, 
Yeah, but the other thing you can do is if you spend 10 capital, you can just fire everyone and then rehire them all and do a full reshuffle, um, which is very, very handy. So they do go down over time. Uh, well, usually I find they go down over time. So anyway, let's uh, skip to the next turn and see how we do. All right, crime is actually slightly up. Oh, there's a question about child labor laws. Too many of our younger citizens are leaving school early in order to take up low-paying jobs. Some are even skipping school to work full-time when they should be learning. The law is currently very weak with regards to preventing companies from employing under-16s in full-time positions. This proposal, proposed law would make it a criminal offense to knowingly employ someone under-16 for more than five hours a day. I like that idea. I mean, I think it's important for kids to get part-time jobs to learn certain things and you know certain habits and whatever but more than five time, five hours a day when you're under 16 yeah i don't mind uh making that a crime uh our budget surplus is now 2.31 billion which is not a huge surplus i mean that's barely putting a dent in a 1.2 trillion dollar debt uh, but it's uh, it's at least moving in the right direction although the economy overall is pretty good right now so that's certainly helping now, have we made a dent anywhere? Looks like no. Are we improving the environment at all? Mm, just barely. That's too bad. Uh, although I think some of these are still, yeah, they're still going to take a while to kick in. So our environment should move in generally the correct direction. We've got a rail strike going on. I had not noticed that before. Mostly caused, no, rail subsidies are bringing it down. We don't have much in the way of rail subsidies. And I, I would like them. They're pretty expensive though. They piss off motorists, but they do increase rail usage, encourage commuters, help out the earnings of the poor and middle, but just like not even enough to say. They also bring down um, unemployment, which is interesting. Um, hmm. What do we got here? Some homelessness, which is not good. It pisses off the poor, the liberals, the middle income, increases crime. None of those things are good. Um, there seems to be a lot of poverty. It's on an uptick. Can we improve that at all? Can we improve schools? That actually would have a huge effect on a lot of stuff. You know what? We're going to max out our schooling. Because I think that'll be a pretty good start. Increase overall education levels, which are already pretty good, but let's boost them. Make some people happy. It's going to make... It's going to decrease private schools, but... You know what? Let's do it. State schools. Let's get them in there. Again, we're, I'm playing this in a relatively socialist bent, but part of it is because, of course, I'm playing as the government, so I'm going to tend to go that way. But you could... Um, right now, pot is legal? Wow. Hmm. Oh, no, cancel. Organized crime. Would be nice to get this to drop. Spine, yeah. It's our alcohol law. So, you know, we could increase the uh, the alcohol law here, which would dramatically decrease the consumption. It would tick off the liberals, though. Um, the liberals who are currently increasing their happiness to us. Actually, what, what's important? Right now, our people are liking us pretty much. You know what? I'm going to save my capital. We won't make too many changes. We're going to see what happens next month. Religious condemnation. Called on you to resign, told his supporters not to vote for you or support your party, been described as an amoral and spiritually corrupt leader who should not be given the support of the church. Damn. We also lost some of our credit rating, which is really unfortunate. How come? A bad sign. Oh, because we've got so much debt. We really do need to pay that stuff down. And our GDP just worsened. Which is really terrible. Uh, uncompetitive economy, credit rating downgrade, the rail strike's not helping uncompetitive economy. We are moving in the right direction, but like not enough. Should we cancel maternity leave? It doesn't cost us anything. Like this is not a policy that costs us any money. Um, hmm. All right, let's continue here. Where, I don't remember where the productivity is. What does it look like? This one here, all right. Health is still bringing down our productivity. Health that's barely ticking up. And it's still the pollution that's the big problem. And as the environment kicks in, you know, let's, um, oh, the money is a problem. Our deficit, 
We did get down the debt a little bit, but currently we've got a pretty major deficit. What do we do with that? Should I increase the, uh, the income tax? It'll make us a lot of money. Why does it ever piss off some people? I mean, middle income people already aren't going to vote for us. Although, again, it's a factor of many different things, right? Anyone who falls under the middle income is going to piss us off and be pissed off at us. That is really not making much in the way of money. Gas tax can actually raise quite a bit of cash. Let's bring it up to uh, 25%. Why not? Again, decrease the amount of uh, motorists, improve the or in improve the environmentalist opinion of us. Um, and we've got a little bit of cash left over. Is there anything we could cut? Let's cut back on our road work. Oh, we don't have the political capital. Okay, let's just go next turn and see what happens. Royal Scandal! Prominent member of the royal family has uncomfortably made a comment that could be considered racist if taken out of context. The government, the comment was overheard by press photographers and is causing a scandal. How will your government react? Uh, we will, um, we'll support the monarch. Because, you know, why not? Racist monarchs? And then that's what makes the world go around. That's like... 50% of Canada's uh, economy is based on racist monarchs. All right, so we are getting quite popular. The uh, only thing we need to worry about now is not going too heavily into debt because it could really F us hard. Um, environmentalists are going up. I would like if we could somehow keep the environment going without spending all that much money. Um, racial profiling. I could bring up the toll roads. It hardly makes any money at all. It's mostly a, a way to manipulate what voters or whatever. Um, all right, this is going to piss off a lot of people. But let's go ahead. So right now we're... Hold on, let's revert. 41 billion. Let's go up to... 40%, 48 billion a quarter. That'll put us in the green or in the black. All right, let's 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 see how horrible this is for us. There's a question to ban same-sex marriage. No, of course I'm not going to ban same-sex marriage. The other 50% of Canada's economy is based on gay marriages. Those things are lavish. All right, so let's click out of here. Border intentions. Well, how's the everyone group going on? So everyone hates the violent crime, crime, and the tobacco tax. Really? There's not a smoker group? There used to be a group for smokers. Oh, interesting. All right, violent crime. Hang on, we are... We are... This is Canada. We're total ban on all handguns. Patriots don't like it. We'll drop violent crime. Liberals don't like it too much. Parents love it and drop liberalism. No, this is fine. Oh, we don't have the political capital. Next turn. That's what we're going to do. We're going to ban handguns. It's interesting that it doesn't ma matter sort of where you put... Stress epidemic? Really? I don't see a red thing for it. Pollution going down, thank you very much. All right, handgun laws. Come on, total ban. Let's get rid of that stuff. Boom. And next turn, conservatives are hating us. Liberals are currently going up, but they'll go down from the handgun laws. Conservatives mostly hate, hate us because there's legalized prostitution. Doesn't make most people happy. Uh, and it certainly doesn't, like, help our economy. That is not 50% of Canada's economy. Um, we might ha we might cancel that one, just just for political gains. Corporate manslaughter bill. New bill proposed that will allow a corporate entity to be prosecuted for manslaughter when they have been found guilty of negligence resulting in the loss of life. 
The law is necessary to deter companies from cutting corners when it comes to the safety of their employees, members of the public, too many people die every year in industrial accidents, and often there are no lessons learned to, and no blame apportioned. The law will be a step forward to corporate for corporate responsibility. Otherwise, the law is unenforceable. With large companies employing many subcontractors, the legal complexities involved in applying blame for accidents are considerable. The law may well be intention, may be well intentioned, but in practice, it will be an expensive waste of time that serves to line the pockets of lawyers, while failing to achieve any real change in corporate behavior. Um, I am going to block the law just because I'm worried about my GDP in general. And frankly, it does sound like like a huge spaghetti mess to try to implement like corporate manslaughter as a thing. There's got to be other ways to deal with it. I'll, I'll block it. It'll be interesting to see what kind of effects that has. Yeah, that asthma epidemic. It is, it is on its way down, though, so that's good. Um, we do have the $2.5 billion surplus. Debt is very barely going down. Mostly we've got people relatively happy. The middle income still hates me a lot, and that's mostly going to be from the, uh, the income tax. They're also unhappy about homelessness. Which mostly if we could drop the unemployment. Which is mostly a factor of the poor GDP. Which is mostly a factor of the un uncompetitive economy. Which is being aided by the productivity. It is on its way down. Not quite as good as we'd like. We could also drop the corporate tax. It doesn't actually make us that much money. But... We do kind of need the money. Rail strike is on its way down, but it's still not great. Um, hmm. Doesn't like the labor laws. Oh, if we went pro-union, it would not help to eliminate the rail strike because we'd be supporting the unions. Whereas if we went pro-employer, it would actually try to break up the rail strike as quickly as possible. In fact, if we're playing as the conservative government in Canada, which is the one in power right now, we would probably pass a bill that would force them to go back to work. So it actually increase the working rate. Would that actually improve productivity? Yeah, productivity, capitalists. Drop this, drop that. Trade unions, socialists would be pissed off. You know what? Drops wages, too, which is not ideal. I want to see what it does, though. Let's drop this all the way here and see what kind of effects this has. Once the rail strike breaks, we could actually bring this back up at that point. Because remember, it only will trigger again if it goes above that red line. So we might change our stance later on. All right, let's hit next. Inventing the internet. I like those little blurbs. Uh, freedom of information request. Calls... Um, no, I think I like the freedom of information law. I think that's pretty important. And again, we're, we've got a fair amount of liberals and we want to try to keep them happy, especially since we did ban those gun laws. Um, yeah, handgun laws. They don't like it quite as much as before, but they still, still mostly like it. It's okay. How's the organized crime? It's still pretty much where it was. It actually feeds in the crime. Now, crime overall is dropping. violent crime or organized crime rather you just cancel the policy and ban gambling outright well dropping it down all the way to the bottom is going to have no effect on anything whatsoever It's almost as good as just canceling it, but it's cheaper. So I think I will do that. I think it'll still have a slight positive bump on capitalists. It will, unfortunately, right now it's currently lowering unemployment and it will no longer do that when it's down there, which makes sense. I mean, I'm probably closing casinos and stuff, tourism and jobs, but it's a big contributor to organized crimes. So we're gonna get rid of that and hope that makes a difference. Alcohol abuse is dropping, but not completely gone. Um, we could buff our police forces. Just a tad. Bring down violent crime some more, and crime a fair bit. Actually, oops, apparently I just got a, uh... hold on, that's my phone, let me mute that, all right. Uh, right now, it's actually, crime is increasing because our police force is not quite well equipped enough, and I don't like that. I'm gonna bring it to the point where they're at least slowly decreasing the crime. 
uh, greatly increasing violent crime, which is good. And the alcohol abuse is slightly. All right, let's do that. It is going to cost more money. But we do have some to spare. All right, let's uh, flip to the next turn and see what we've got. So we're going to take this through to an election. GDP is continuing to drop. Health dropping. That is really terrible. Oil pipeline attack. Heard there's been an attack on an oil pipeline in a neighboring country. I guess that would be America, since what other neighbor do we have? Apparently by a rebel faction, and that oil supplies in our country may be under threat. Other nations look like they may be stockpiling oil as a result to insulate themselves against the effects of repeat attacks, and the result, the supply of oil to us has fallen and may take a while to recover. Negative oil supply and pissed off patriots. GDP is falling. The global economy doesn't help. The oil price doesn't help. I wonder if there's a policy we can trigger to help with some of these. So, what could we do to increase productivity? We could put in the uh, oil drilling subsidies. It costs a lot of money, though. Like, so much money. Let's see. Oh, can implement a flat income tax, which um, I think everyone pays the exact same amount. It, uh, it, it's not good for poor people. It's really good for wealthy people. What am I looking for? Improved um, productivity in some way. Well, I mean, more educated people is certainly one possible option. Um, could improve technology grants, actually. It's always a good idea, now that I think about it. Telecommuting? If it, oh, people would like this. It's not very expensive. It would decrease the amount of drivers and the pollution that much more. Let's, let's go ahead and put that in. Car usage, commuters go down. Commuters are happy, even though there's less of them. Parents, trade unions. All right, let's... um. Let's max it out. We can do that. Um, what's the other thing I want to look at? Um, faith school subsidies? We have faith school subsidies? Makes way more religious people. I might cancel that. It has no negative effects other than the fact that it makes more religious people and they hate me. But I was really hoping it's to increase state funding. Or science funding, rather. Which actually increases unemployment. Oh no, it brings down unemployment. Uh, it's quite expensive, but we could, right now, our technology levels are actually dropping because we're not being funded very effectively. And I would like to get to the point where our technology levels increase, our energy efficiency increases. It'd be nice if we could get to the point where we're, oh no, we're already decreasing unemployment. Yeah, that's fine. I think I'm going to go here. We're going to fund some electron microscopes. It doesn't take very much political capital, but it is going to cost some amount of money. Still, I think it's a good plan to do that. Uh, what else do we have? What's this? Public libraries? I like public libraries. Abortion laws? On-demand abortions. Now, no wonder the religious people are so goddamn pissed off. Liberals like it, conservatives not so much. Um, state schools, which is already maxed out. University grants. Uh, right, that was school. Oh, school prayer. Yeah, school prayer is fine. On parent request? Doesn't even make any sense. I just want to save my political capital, but... I feel like there's another... There's another thing I could have put in here. I wonder about small business grants. Can be expensive, might not do anything. internet tax over my dead body I will never implement internet tax are you crazy oh okay well the tech colleges would help stem cell research is actually really cheap it'll probably piss off religious people but it's cheap and improves our technology improves our GDP I mean it takes a while to kick in and the health as well no I should have done this like day one I forget I forgot about that one um, I think oh we're pretty much out of uh, out of capital let's hit the button and see how we do. Crime is dropping, which is good. GDP is still suck. 
appoint a senior judge. We've got two options. We've got Mathis Miller has been a strong supporter for human rights, making many landmark rulings in favor of individual rights and liberties. He's also seen as a strongly pro-consumer, not afraid to challenge large corporations. I like that. Olivia Cote is a household name thanks to her many famous rulings concerning violent crimes and her often outspoken views on the harsh sentences that she feels should be applied to thieves, muggers, and shoplifters. Um, we're going to go for the guy that doesn't sound quite so aggressive. Middle term of our election. Our party membership is good. Poll rating is excellent. Socialists freaking love us. And you know, they love us because of this. How many social... Oh, right, like, everyone in our country is socialist. That's why we can increase the, uh... We can increase our income tax even more. We do have a deficit. I wonder. Well, we don't need quite that much money. Let's see what happens. It's cheap to lower later on. Let's do that. He used up all our political capital. Um, we're still hoping for these, some of these problems to go away. They're not being very aggressively tackled. Oh, pollution is maybe going away completely and possibly two more quarters. And that'll be really powerful because that's going to have so many effects. It's just going to cascade through everything else. Rail strike is going down ish. We'll see what we can do next turn. GDP down, credit rating down. Crime down. Health still poor. Capitalists hate me. Surplus is huge. GDP is being dragged down. Global economy, uncompetitive economy. Can we get rid of this finally? No. You know what? We Let's get rid of the corporate income tax. Do we have enough money for that? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, right? The working week is bringing down the health. It's mostly because of the labor laws. Uh, where's the health? What else? Pollution, yeah. Alcohol abuse is still a problem. Um, you know what? Let's practically ban alcohol for a little while and see how it goes. Liberals definitely don't like it. But we're okay, we can pretty much do whatever we want right now. And get reelected. There's an immigration scandal. Ugh. Conservatives hate it, there's more racial tension. Patriots hate it, the poor really hate it. They're taking our gerbs! They took our gerbs. That's what they're complaining about. Alright, so yeah. It's upsetting some people, that's for sure. The socialists don't mind though, and that's like, that's what we're getting elected on. We're getting elected on the backs of socialists. Homelessness is going up, though. How much money we got? We have a surplus. Not a huge surplus. Improve state housing. Hmm. Wow, that's expensive. Productivity is going up. Health is kind of suck. Alright, what else can we do to improve health? I guess, actually, that working week is really being a problem, isn't it? And the pollution. But I think the pollution, yeah, the pollution is going to be gone next turn. That'll help a lot. And the working week is mostly those labor laws. Well. What else can we do for health? Welfare. Public services, eye tests, organ donation. It costs nothing and it's a good idea. Universal. No opt-out? <laughs> no one can say no to that? It's going to have huge health benefits and it's only going to piss off the religion. If you die in Canada, we can harvest your organs. I love it. Alright, we're totally going for that. That is freaking amazing. Um, what else can we get? Healthcare vouchers? Oof, very expensive. Free eye tests? Yeah, that's fine, and everyone loves it, so what the hell. Here, everyone gets lots of eye tests. Costs us not enough to really matter. Helps poor earnings, helps health. Good. Let's try that. 
Fishing quotas. Marine conservation groups are pushing for us to sign international laws restricting the quantity of certain fish that can be caught by our fishermen in any calendar year. This is an attempt to preserve the viability of fish stocks for future generations. We can agree. It's just common sense. Modern technology is meant to become far too cheap and easy to catch a huge number of fish, reducing prices, causing dangerous depletion in supply. Might be unpopular with the fishermen, blah, 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 or reject. Yeah, we'll agree to the quotas. Polls, we'd get 70% of the votes. There's a security meeting. Growing concern about a relatively small extreme, extremist religious organization. Oh, wow. This is the problem with pissing off the religious people. What are the Blattenberg? Battenberg group? I don't know what they're derived from. Okay, yeah, we're pretty aggressively pissing off the religious people. All right, you know what we're gonna do? So we're gonna buff. We're gonna have, we're, yeah. Cause this is the way my games always go. It's I start off so like liberal and nice. And next thing you know, we're gonna introduce wiretapping. Oh, wait, we already have wiretap. Oh, law and order. Um, No, seriously, we already have wiretapping? Indeed we do, with government decreed. Yeah, let's monitor all the things. Um, it's not necessarily the biggest impact on organized crime. With judicial order, what's oh, expensive? Let's just improve our intelligence service. It's not that expensive, and it's mostly gonna hurt the organized crime. I mean, it also decreases terrorism, which is currently on the rise, which we don't want. We wanna bring it down. Let me go all the way. And we can tweak it later on. Bribing international media moguls. I like it. Pollution is now at the end. We've also got technological advantage. Fantastic. This is going to have a huge boost to productivity. Improves our GDP a little bit and will continue to improve over time. And it's just a good sign that all of our other stuff, which is awesome, is increasing. This is actually being pulled down by science funding. Do we really not have that much? I guess we could improve it a little bit more. Why not? So our GDP should start to improve now. Especially pollution being gone. Euthanasia. Yeah, I want to legalize euthanasia. Let me tell you, if I'm ever in a situation where I want to off myself, like, get the hell out of my way and let me do it. God. Um, religious extremists we're still worried about. Threat assessment quite high. Well, that's what the uh, satellite monitoring is for. Every officer armed with submachine guns. Alright, overall, uh, I'm feeling kind of okay. Assuming we don't get nuked by religious extremists, we should be okay. Uh, uncompetitive economy is about to go away because our productivity is going through the roof, mostly because of education and our new technological advantage in general is awesome, but also just technology is good. Uh, education remains high, which is very important. Uh, technology is improving that as well. Um, good stuff. Asthma situation, still not great. The environment is still a bit poor, but rising. So we should be able to help things out. Crime is down. Alcohol abuse is still a problem. Is there something we can do with that? Was there a welfare like? I guess not. Food Standards Agency, we don't have one? Let's get that going. It's going to piss off farmers. That's okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to fiddle too much. Actually, rail strike's almost going to go away, I think, because of the amount of unemployment is going away. Are we really getting rid of unemployment? That's poverty. Actually, I can probably... Unemployment over here. It's actually still relatively high. It's being brought down by a lot of factors. Uh, the poor GDP is still shooting the unemployment pretty high, but GDP is improving, so these are all linked, right? So things will continue to kind of work together and be okay. Um, clean fuel subsidies. Max. There you go. Improve the environment a little bit more. And free bus passes. Monorail. Say it with me. Uh, bus lanes. Bus lane, all the things. Okay. Every lane is a bus lane. Cars have to drive on the shoulder. 
Uncompetitive economy is gone. Tax evasion has started. That's not good. No more organized crime is good. We've got one of our people from our country just won the Nobel Prize for chemistry, the Nobel Prize for chemistry. Just goes to show how we have some of the best educated, brightest people in the world. Yeah, because our education is awesome. Our technology is awesome. We're doing great there. We got an upgrade to our credit rating, which is going to be very good. Our GDP is shooting way up. Unemployment is dropping. Crime is almost non-existent, except for the tax evasion and, you know, the extremist groups. Um, yeah, that's going to be a bitch to bring down to. Luckily, luckily... Uh, we have a bit of a surplus, so we can we can nudge this down at this point. We've got a 5.5 billion dollar surplus. Also, our GDP is improving, so we can probably drop this by slightly more than five, and have this be okay. We're gonna nudge it down. Um, it's gonna be hard to eliminate completely. Next. Pointing friends to top jobs, I like it. People smuggling. Uh, hidden inside a cargo container, attempt people smuggling. Uh, strong evidence these people were desperate to flee persecution, poverty, even death. Yeah, we'll let them stay. It's fine. It'll probably increase racial racial tension, but we'll just have to suck it up and deal with it. Okay, that is huge for us. It's so good. Um, homelessness is dropping, which is going to help a lot of things. This is oh, still flirting with it. Let's uh, increase rail subsidies slightly. Alcohol abuse, meh. Till the poverty and unemployment keeps going down, we're gonna have a pretty hard time really getting that going. I could increase the uh, the police force, but I'm not sure I wanna do that. As shot, just shot back up. What the hell? Environment just dropped sharply. Oh, because the GDP just went up, which increases all kinds of economic um, effects and things. Damn it. Is there something else I can do environmentally? Fuel efficiency standards. Very harsh. Actually increases car usage? Oh, because the fuel's got to be really good. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Alright, where's the CO2 actually? That's something I can see. Actually, I guess I can go here and then there. CO2. CO2 emissions are up. Brings down the environmentalists, the environmentalists and the foreign relations. Doesn't actually hurt the environment, which is kind of funny. Um. And it's mostly the GDP thing, but GDP is good. Make money. Credit rating upgraded even further. GDP is being boosted. Everyone is happy, except for the religious people. Although I think their membership has gone down ever so slightly. We do have a Patriot Army in the Battenberg group, which is still potentially problematic. Our security forces are adequate apparently though, so we should be okay there. Everyone likes this. Middle income people are still incredibly unhappy, mostly because of that income tax. Tax evasion is dropping, but not enough. Um, we have $25 billion surplus. So we're at 62. You know what? I think we started at 41. Let's go to 35%. We will have su successfully dropped the tax rate within our term. I mean, we raised it for a little while, but then we've dropped it since then. Rail strike is ended. Fantastic. We received religious condemnation. Oh well. GDP continues to rise. Health is shooting up dramatically. 83% of the poll, we are crushing it. This is slow fading. Um, still being boosted by a few things. And it is really hard to get rid of tax evasion. Um, but let's give it time and see what happens. Still running a small surplus, which is good. I'm going to leave it there. I want to run a small surplus, bring that debt down a little bit more. Asthma, ugh. Alcohol, ugh. Homelessness, almost there. And this is still sticking around, good. Next turn. Election draws near. Appoint UN ambassador. We can appoint Audrey Wong, well known as a patriot who will fight tooth and claw to get our interests represented in the UN, seen as a popular choice among patriotic, more conservative citizens. She's historically against foreign aid and a supporter of import tariffs. She's not popular internationally. Well, let's go with the other option then. 
popular figure in the international stage with a reputation for solving difficult problems through compromise and understanding a true internationalist. He's popular with the liberals and socialists in our society as well as foreign leaders. So let's pick that. Um, there is one of these meters over here. That's immigration, which is on its way up. Racial tension on its way down. International trade. Yeah, we would like to keep that up. It's brought down by our poor foreign relations, apparently. Our ambassador is helping. CO2 emissions are kind of sucking it down. We might be able to improve foreign aid a little bit. Foreign relations shoot up dramatically by doing this. The costs go up a little bit. You know what? I think we can afford to do something like this. I'm going to piss off the conservatives. The religious people, if we can eliminate them completely, then we won't have a problem with those, uh, those uh, the fanatics there that are going to blow us all up. Oh, we could... Well, we don't want to cancel school prayer, do we? I don't think so. But maybe the... Uh, nope, that's public library. Where's the religious schools? Religious faith school subsidies. Oh, that's that one there. This is actually an issue of controversy in Canada because Catholic schools do get uh, federal subsidies or provincial subsidies, government subsidies anyway. Um, hmm. Increases racial tension. And it's costing us a half a billion dollars a year to do that. It is improving uh, education, though. It's not very popular with the current voters. You know what? Let's cancel it. We're going to see. We might, be able, we might get assassinated by the religious people before we reach that first election. We'll see how it goes. There we go. Election results. Start counting those ballots and cheat if you have to. Oh, we are going to crush the opposition. There's a fair deal of apathy, it seems. But overall, people are pretty happy with our government. Now, it's a combination of having made half-decent choices, but also um, sort of eliminating the groups that don't agree with us. So overall, the socialists and the commuters, actually, commuters are quite happy with us, liberals as well. The poor love us. We are champions of the poor. The religious people are not terribly happy with us, and capitalists as well. Now, you might wonder how we got so many religious votes in the first place. It's because a lot of people who are religious may also be a socialist or a commuter or this or that, and it depends on, like, individual influences. Um, you know, if they're re socialist, religious, environmentalist, they're going to vote for us, despite the fact that we're basically the Antichrist. So, so that's good. And there we go. So that's, and we've eliminated homelessness completely. That's how amazing we are. Uh, we can choose if we want a toxic dump, um... Yeah, sure, what could possibly go wrong? And uh, and that's it. That is the end of this Let's Try of Democracy 3. Democracy 3 is still currently in beta um, and is, is very similar to Democracy 2. But if you haven't played any of it yet, play just grab Democracy 3. The interface is a lot better, a lot more modern, a lot cleaner, runs better at higher resolutions, seems to support great mods out of the box. It should add a lot of replay value. And I know that like visually it's not an exciting game, but man, is it ever fun to play. I really enjoy it. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.